what's going on YouTube? This your boy I am Cord back at it again with another tutorial. So this time I want to show y'all how to import MIDI into Logic. So say you got a MIDI file and you exported it from another DAW. In this case, I exported a MIDI file from FL Studio. If you need to know how to do that, check out the tutorial that I've done on that. So I exported it and I want to import it into Logic so that I can do my arrangements in there and add more stuff to the beat, you know, cause I'm quicker in Logic than I am in FL when it comes to certain things. So, first thing we wanna do, make sure we got our MIDI file right here. Got Logic open, I'm gonna hit File and go to, uh, you can select New, but I'm gonna do New from Template because I have an external Phantom template that I created. So if I want to use my Roland Phantom, I can do it without having to touch my Phantom. I got all my sounds from my Phantom in Logic, or rather to Logic. So once that's done, I'm gonna hit enter so that my cursor or playhead is back at on the one. And you want to change your tempo. So I know the FLP was at 140. So you can change your tempo right here. I don't know how other dolls do it, but I know at Logic, I don't have to change the tempo. I can actually go to File, Import, MIDI File, choose my MIDI file, and it's gonna ask me, do I also want to import the tempo information? So I'm gonna say, yeah, I wanna import the tempo. So boom, let's go bring in every region from my MIDI file that was in my FLP. And you see, it changed my tempo as well up here. So, I'm gonna make sure I save this before I get started. Yep, tut. So, as you can see, Logic automatically give these tracks a default instrument, which is the Steinway Grand Piano which I don't want to use that, as you can tell, like, listen. No, that's not how I wanted to sound. That's not how it was sounding in, in F, uh, FL Studio. So, we're going to change that. But first, we need to do some important things, important steps. As you see, you see these little zeros right here on the sides of the region. I, when you export the MIDI or e when you import MIDI into Logic, it adds extra information into the MIDI file that you don't need. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna hit I to get rid of this little one over here. I'm gonna go to the event editor so you can see what I'm talking about. So as I select my region, you can see like, this is the information that came with each MIDI region. Look at my status. Program, control, control notes, pitch band. I don't need all that information. The only information that I am concerned about are the notes. I didn't do no pitch bands to none of these in here. So the only thing that I need is the notes. So we're going to delete everything else besides the notes. So a quick way to do that is we're going to unselect notes. So now it's showing me everything else that was included in this MIDI file. So I make sure I got the first, you know, the first piece of information selected. Hit Command A and press Delete. As you can see, my zeros went away on the side, right? So now I just got my plain old MIDI file, MIDI region. So if I click on Notes again, now it's showing me all my notes. That's in this MIDI. So I need to do this to all of these. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so I can see everything. And this takes literally like two, three minutes. Not even. So I select notes, command A, delete, click back on notes. Oh. Go up here. Do this. Go to this next region, boom. Get rid of notes, select everything else, bring back notes, boom. Now 
If there's any other tutorials that y'all would like to see, just let me know and I get to it as soon as possible. You know, it don't matter if it's Logic, FL Studio, Studio One, Pro Tools, just ask me. All right, so now, all my little zeros and all the edge information is gone. So, the next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna get rid of this, because I don't need it anymore. Make sure I hit Command S to save. And I wanna delete the ends of these regions, because it's only eight bar loops. All right, so now, I'm gonna hit I, So now the next thing you need to do is find the VSTs that you were using in the previous DAW that you exported your MIDI from. So when I exported the MIDI file from FL Studio, before I exported it, I named each track specifically so I could know which VST and which sound from the VST that I was using. So, if you need to know how to do that, just uh, check out the tutorial that I did, exporting MIDI from FL Studio 12 on the Mac, and uh, it will show you everything in detail. So, I know these are Nexus tracks. I'll just try to keep them organized so I know what I'm doing. Silent. These are drums. I just keep my drums up here. All right, so I'm gonna start with this track and I'm gonna hit Command Option S. So that's gonna open up a new software instrument track. So I'm gonna open up about four of them. And then, like I said, these I know for sure are drum sounds. So what I would do is I like to use a machine but in this case, I'm going to use battery four. I'm going to be easier and it won't be, you know, working too hard on my CPU up here. So say this one, upgrade three, snare. Six. And then with uh, battery, which I'll probably do a tutorial on this later. As you can see, when I hit, when I hit the, the C1, that's the only octave or pitch that it's going to hear. If I hit any other notes on my MIDI controller, you won't hear nothing. But to change that, Make sure I click that. Change this to C6. Hit enter. So I wanted, I wanted to be that range from C1 to C6. Then change all these to one. Snap, and we're good. So now, now we're good. So what I want to do, I'm going to go through here. And name all my instruments, you know, open up each VST for each instrument. Like I said, for my drums, I would use battery four. And then I think you can use the EX24 and all that if that's what you're used to or machine or whatever you use to program your drums in Logic. Just make sure you open that onto those tracks. So once I do open up the VST, so I would drag this snare right here. So now we should have, and it's a higher option. So I'm gonna hit Command Four, Command A, hold Shift and Option, and I'll drop down two octaves. And as simple as that. So I would do the same for these. In this case, I would just duplicate this Battery Four track, and I could just drag these there. 
and then go back into battery and change the sound. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to do that for all of my tracks and I'll be right back and let y'all hear and see how everything is done. So now I'm back. I've already added my VSTs and selected the sounds that corresponds with the names that I exported from my FL Studio. So what I'm going to do right now I'm going to get rid of all these because I don't need them now. And I have named them on the sides so how they're going to show up, you know, in my mixer, you know, in my mixer window. And I'm just going to organize them a little bit. And uh, so from here, I'm going to select all of them, you know, by clicking on the first one. Hold the shift, click on the last one, and I'm going to hit shift option in. What this is going to do is it's going to take the names that are named, the actual tracks, and apply them to the region. Because I don't, I don't need these names now. So boom. Done. So let's hear what we got. So, I see something's not playing. So, I know my 808 is not playing. So, that's going to be a contact ordeal. So, you're going to open up contact. If at any point, your contact doesn't play any sound at all, what you could do click on this drop down arrow and choose Omni. So now I gotta check the rest of them. So it work. So my choir, same thing. And there you have it. So now everything in here is working properly. And now I could go on ahead with the creative side of everything and, you know, do some little effects here and there, arrange it before I export it into Pro Tools. I like mixing in Pro Tools. So that's pretty much it. If y'all have any other questions, please feel free to let me know. Hit me up on... Um, Dog on phone. Hit me up on uh, in the comments, or you can hit me up on Instagram. I'm always on Instagram at I am Cord K H O R D, and I get back to you as soon as I can. Until then, appreciate the support, and I hope y'all have a good one. Peace out.